Hello friends, I hope you're doing well, I hope you're thriving in your practice. Just a quick recap of uh, the last video I did. I apologise for the bad connection on my part. Please understand I don't have Wi-Fi and um, I'm on 4G to 2G to 4G network. So sometimes it drops down to 2G depending on the connection. And that last video, it's pretty obvious it, felt, uh, it fell down to uh, 2G. I'm working on it, but it's it's a problem that I just can't fix. It's out of my control, but it won't stop me uh, having future guests on the on on this channel. Um, however, the guest came out clear, and I guess that's all that counts. Uh, that the guest was uh, able to be heard clearly, uh, and I hope you enjoyed that video. Uh, please tolerate it. Uh, be please be patient. Uh, it's a, this channel is a work in progress. So today. Um, I want to talk about, just briefly, I don't want to make a long video today, uh, I want to talk briefly about some external things in Buddhism, what's going out there, going on out there in the Western world. I mean, I don't want to create a big hurrah about it or a big fuss about it, but there tends to be uh, a group of Buddhists or a group of people, I don't even know if they're real Buddhists actually, but uh, it's they're, they're, I'm not even going to name them right now. But what I'll say is this, they are, for some reason, they're trying to bring race, uh, uh, the color of the skin uh, uh, into Buddhism, like to make the color of the skin relevant um, and to make uh, some kind of uh, discrimination against white Buddhists for some reason. Um, now, like I said, I, I don't think I'm white, I'm white, but I'm brown. Um, I'm not even sure myself, but it what relevance is it if someone is white or whatever color they are uh, in Buddhism? And there's a group of people out there. There's someone who went to the trouble to actually write a book called Too Many White People in Buddhism or something. Um, I'm not even going to put the reference down. You can search it. Someone wrote a book. I, I'm not even sure that's the right title, but something along those lines, right? Why? See, the thing is, if Buddhism, right, the, the teachings of the Buddha don't require any privilege. They don't require one to pay $100,000 a year in a private college to learn it. Then It's not taught in secret. It's not for a select group of people. Anyone can pick up a book on Buddhism, do a search um, on a browser and find any information on, on Buddhism, on, on the teachings. Um, they can... Anyone can approach any monk anywhere, anywhere in the world, and talk about Buddhism. It's it's a it's a no it's it's a misnomer. It's it's a no brainer. It's it's just a moot topic. Um, and for some reason, these people want to make uh, race an issue, even in Buddhism, right? Uh, so look, stop, just stop, right? Just stop. Now, in in my previous in that uh, previous video. Some things didn't come out clearly. But one thing's for sure, right? Um, if you want to know what evil is, know what evil does. Okay, what does evil do? Evil forces, what do they do? Evil evil uh, intentions, ignorance, right? People that, uh, it's not really the people, it's, it's, it's the views that they follow. It's the school of thought that is followed that creates the evil, right? Like my... Uh, my uh, one of my teachers says is don't blame the, the person blame the ignorance right so the thing is 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 this right it's kind of like when you study evil right then you when you know how evil works so how does evil work evil destroys right evil causes division evil causes uprising evil causes uh, uh, like a disharmony disunity Evil tells lies. Evil works in stealth. Evil works in darkness. Uh, evil works uh, through trickery, right? Through certain types of magic, right? It it, uh, it 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 works through illusion, right? Evil cheats. It steals. Uh, it murders. Evil murders, right? Notice I'm not talking about the person. I'm talking about evil. Evil murders, right? Okay, so. When one, we've seen it happen um, many, many times where you have someone who uh, was, was 
living uh, an evil life and then later on in life they change their ways and they stop doing it. What's the difference? The difference is the person changed their views. They changed their, their, their uh, I guess, their, 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 uh, their, their uh, perspective on things, right? So it's a view. They change their views, right? And it's these views that cause evil. And there's, and unfortunately in this world, there's another force that's really powerful, but is, I guess, falls under the umbrella of evil, right? Because there's a lot of, uh, I guess, ter terms and qualities that fall under the umbrella term of evil. Greed, right? Now, you all are concerned about all these different um, systems of society. For example, capitalism, communism, fascism, uh, socialism, all these kind of things. And everybody's trying to fight for the best system. Okay, I understand. Whatever system you, whatever system you follow, it really doesn't matter. They can all work if the ideal is met uh, completely and utterly, right? But there's one thing we always miss. We always miss, right? We miss the fact of greed and hatred. And we also miss the fact that power corrupts, right? Now, that's an old cliche. Power corrupts. Absolutely, absolute power corrupts or something like that. I, I can't even remember how it goes. But anyway, if you know, please put it in, right in the comments uh, to, to remind me. But the thing is, most people are not trained or are not uh, staunch in their morals enough, do not have a, have a sort of staunchness in morals and in correct views, that when they reach a certain level of power or a certain, le certain level of finances, they cannot deal with the temptations they're, they're in, right? So it takes a really special person to, to be able to have a lot of power to have a lot of finances and not be corrupted. So to me, this is normal because once someone has a lot of power, once has a lot of, uh, once a person has a lot of money, there's a lot of temptations. There's a lot of options. So if your views aren't in line with, with like a, a, a staunch moral fundamental, uh, I guess, basis, right? They're not, they're not sitting on solid rock, the solid rock of, uh, staunch morals then the person will, will likely uh, fall into the, the pit of corruption, right? Which, which we've seen happen over and over again. It happens, to, ha happens over and over again, right? So this is a problem. Like, it's not really the systems. It's the, pro it's the problem is greed and hatred and evil. And that's where I think most people are, are always, missing, always missing the point. When you're trying to fight for a system, whatever system it is, it doesn't matter. I don't care what you talk about capitalism, pure capitalism, pure socialism, pure communism, all these kind of things. One thing that is never um, talked about is evil, right? We, ne we don't talk about the temptations of power, the temptations of uh, c that corruption can bring, right? All the things that can happen, what happens when someone becomes powerful, what comes to that person, the options that come to that person or group of people and how they deal with it. Now, unless people um, have a strong moral bedrock of uh, principles, it's very hard to not be corrupt, right? So why I'm talking about this is because you see these uh, powerful organizations that have huge political uh, influence uh, invading all areas of society and invading it with this, uh, with 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 these agendas that really don't have a place in the philosophy or the or the doctrine itself, and there and there is such thing as dominating doctrines, doctrines that want to dominate, and the way they want to dominate is simply through evil, through 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 creating the us and them syndrome, us and them scenario, right? So us and them like. It's okay to steal from those person. It's okay for us to lie to those people, to them people, right? So, but you know, that doctrine will implode because if it's okay to lie to some, to certain people, you're setting a precedent. And from then on, it's hard to control. It's like a cascade of, of uh, a cascade into like uh, the pit of uh, the abyss, the abyss of myriad options. Like once you break rules, once you go down the path of evil it's non-stop it it, it, it just it, there's no limit right so if you, if you find it's okay to lie or steal from a certain group of people what 
eventually you can rationalize that it's okay to lie and steal from a different sort of people, certain group of certain uh, of people right because the doctrine is an us and them doctrine and this is what mis is misunderstood about buddhism because the general tenet in terms of uh compassion metta sorry goodwill <clears throat> and we say this in buddhism all the darn time and i don't know why people get this mix this up or try to unless they have the agenda may all beings um be well and happy may all beings be well and happy and the thing about jealousy like the problem that uh jealousy brings is people get jealous of other people's successes or other people's uh achievements or fortune right now um, uh, karuna uh, sorry mudita is appreciation and gladness so in other words we're not jealous we ta actually take uh we take joy in other people's successes and other people's fortune we're not jealous of it we're actually we, and we hope and the saying is may 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 all may all beings not be parted from the good fortune they have obtained so in other words in buddhism we're not jealous of other people's uh fortunes we're not jealous of other people's achievements in fact we take joy in it because honestly what it comes down to is if you see someone have something that you want the 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 normal mundane approach is to be jealous of it or to envy it the buddhist approach um, as the Buddha taught was to actually take joy in it and to be honest to yourself and say, hey, you know, that's what I want, right? So instead of being jealous, you could approach that person and say, how did you do it? Because I want to do it too. That's, that's the healthier uh, mental approach, right? So all these qualities, all these things like this, these groups of people trying to say that um, there's too many white people in Buddhism or try to make it about race, please, no, just say no to these people. Ignore these people. Just shun it off. Shun these um, s silly uh, doctrines away. Shun them away. Shun them away. Tell them to go away. Don't even give them your time, the time of day. What we need to be able to do as Buddhists, right, is one thing that we need to be brave and have courage and just say no to evil. Now, whatever is going on in the world with all the evil that's going on in the world, hey, it's no different to Buddha's time right it's no different to any time in the world there's always evil forces in the world greed hatred delusion uh evil jealousy anger all these kind of things murders have been going on since time immemorial so nothing much has changed in that department what's changed is the buddha's dharma and our approach to this and the, the idea is to be staunch in your own morals and say no to it don't comply to things that are evil right just because a law, for example, is legal, like for, for example, in Australia, it's legal to gamble, it's legal, prostitution is legal, uh, drinking alcohol is, is legal. In America, taking in, in some countries, it's legal to uh, take certain drugs and all these kind of things, right? Just it, it, abortion is legal, for example, right? It's just because those things are legal in terms of the law doesn't mean they're right. Now, I'm not saying um, we shouldn't abide by the law. Of course we should. But also understand that morals are higher than that. If you abide by morals, you won't break any laws, period. Right? This is the main thing. So when evil comes knocking at your door, you do not comply. You just don't participate in anything evil anywhere. And that's how you can help society uh, thrive in the right direction or go in the right direction. So if we all get together, if we all are unified in this and just are prepared to just say no to evil, do not comply with evil, and find alternatives right find alternatives be intelligent be skillful find alternatives to evil right work your way around it use wisdom wisdom always outguns evil a hundred to one all the time there's there's no doubt about it but you will not remove evil from the earth okay it will cannot be removed it is part of dukkha it is part of samsara right so the idea is uh, when you look into the loka dharmas or worldly dharmas, yes, that's evil, but the local tara dharmas, the ones that take, are beyond the world, that's what we focus on as Buddhists. So if, you know, if we're partaking in evil in any way or you're complying, complying is partaking, right? Complying in evil um, or complying in things that aren't correct in, in, in terms of the moral fundamentals is complying with evil. You're adding to it. So just be aware of that okay so be brave be strong stand firm be steadfast and say no to evil
right? Say no to evil and doctrines that that uh, that lead to evil, okay? That lead to evil, and then there's plenty of them. There's plenty of them in the world. Now, again, it doesn't mean as Buddhists we walk around like the police, or we go on missions to try to purge us, uh, to try to purge evil out of the world. That never works. It never ends well. What we do is we do it individually, and we do it unified. And you know if if you have a temple locally or you know a group of Buddhists locally, uh, think like-minded like what I'm talking about, join them and add strength to them and help it grow. And many people will benefit. There's not enough people doing exactly this. If, the, if people want to want my answer to how to deal with the calamity in the world, the first step is not to comply with evil. The second step is to unify with people who do not want to comply with evil. And then the third step is to find alternatives. To work on it not be lazy yes it's difficult it's difficult it's hard to do but it, what else would you do would you rather comply with evil right so these things I just wanted to cover in this video briefly I didn't want to go too deep today I'll probably um, this video is probably longer than 10 minutes I wanted to be 10 minutes but yeah so basically yeah getting back on point here right so the points of this video is when you hear uh, race baiting going on from powerful organizations, political organizations that shouldn't be mentioning Buddhism at all. You know, what we need to do is just stand our ground and say, no, don't accept it. Don't accept it. And 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 just walk away from them, avoid them, these people. But these people won't stop because even since the time of the Buddha, the Buddha's always had uh, people against, uh, it's always, uh, the Dharma has always been controversial to evil, to Mara right, to the evil one and to the evil army, right? So we need to understand this, right? The evil army and the evil one do not does not want Dharma to exist in this world, right? It doesn't want people to escape samsara. It wants us to be, Mara and evil wants us all to be enslaved for eternity, forever, ongoing. They don't, the Mara does not want us out, right? That no one wants, uh, uh, the evil forces want to keep us trapped. And, and enslaved, and, and enslaved, right? Now, Buddha, Buddhism is all about um, getting out of slavery, is unslaving yourself, is is taking the shackle, unbinding from ignorance. Ignorance is slavery, right? Wrong views are slavery. So work hard, be diligent, uh, you know, work, aim towards greatness, right? Develop yourself. In the best possible way all the time be diligent do not be lazy right time goes past real quick right so i think that's enough today may you grow in dharma